Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Mr. PC23 here, going to show you how to overclock the AMD FX 8120 processor via the multiplier. Uh, this is one of the two methods I will be doing. The second method will be the front side bus, or whatever they refer to it as now. I'm still stuck on Phenom. <laughs> so right now I have mine overclocked to 4.2 GHz. When it's under load, right now it's downclocked so it doesn't suck up as much electricity as it can because power bills suck. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go into the BIOS, reset everything to the default after I record my uh, overclock right now because I don't want to lose it because it's completely stable and good. So we'll come back after that. Oh, first thing that I want to note is you're going to need some tools, some applications. First one I recommend is CPU-Z. It displays pretty much everything you need to know about your processor, motherboard, and memory. All the clock speeds, voltages, and whatnot. Uh, core temp for monitor monitoring your temperatures. You can use the Gigabyte tool or whatever motherboard tool you have. This is not accurate at all for um, idle clocks. As you can see, it says 6 Celsius right now with a low of 1. Obviously, it's not that cold in my room. But the max temps are pretty good. If you leave it under load for too long, they will jump up to like 72 Celsius, which is a lie. It doesn't get that hot. But, um,. It can get pretty warm, so just keep in mind that it can. It's not really that accurate up to 10 degrees because the sensor isn't accurate until it warms up, and we don't know how much this chip can really take. I'd say don't go above 60. So yeah, keep that in mind. And then a stress test program. You can use pretty much whatever you want, but I use Y Cruncher, and I don't know. It just it shows broken overclocks really early. It'll show that uh, a multiplication has failed so you'll know that it's not um, working properly rather than just crashing so yeah let's restart and go into the BIOS set everything back to the beginning and I'll show you from there alright so we are now in the BIOS everything's been set back to the default um, so this is what we're gonna be changing here or one of the things we're gonna be changing is the CPU clock ratio um, See, as you can see over here in my BIOS, the Gigabyte BIOS, it shows the target frequency when you change it. You can use the plus or minus keys to change the uh, value, or you can uh, hit enter and then choose what you want. Uh, go back to the default, and you use the arrow keys to move up and down in the BIOS. If you've never been in the BIOS, I really don't recommend you mess with overclocking, because you obviously don't know that much. Um, okay, so let's... Just take this and we'll bump it up a modest uh, 400 megahertz on all cores. Um, one thing you're going to want to change right off the bat is turn off the performance boost, the core performance boost. It will mess with your overclock. It, it makes it really unstable. We don't need to touch this since we're not going to be overclocking via that, this video. Um, this we can leave at default and memory configuration, we don't need to change at all, the memory clock speeds. We might have to change system voltage and we'll just set it to manual so everything's at the normal voltages and we're gonna restart and see if it is stable. Okay so it's booted now and I've loaded up all of my programs that I need. Core temp, let's just take a look at the temperatures, a high of 22 which may or may not be accurate. It, it could be much lower than that actually, but I'm gonna believe it because it was under load at some point to load the operating system. Um, so just keep an eye on your temps while you check for stability. And we'll look over here, we'll see at 1.5 gigahertz because the multiplier downclocks itself. You can change that in the BIOS. I can show you the settings later or just comment on them in the sec comment section if you really care about that. I don't see why you want it maxed out all the time. It'll lower the life of your chip. Alright, so for people using Y Cruncher, which I really do rec recommend, uh, what you're going to want to do is press 2, hit enter, and then however much RAM you have, uh, select the one below that. So I have 11, uh, sorry, 12 gigs of RAM, but operating system can use like one, uh, sorry, 11 point something, so I'm going to go with 7. So it's now going to start doing some stressing of the CPU. If you look down over in the corner, it's maxed out. I'm going to look over at my temps now. Sorry for the autofocus. My phone sort of sucks. 29 Celsius, that's that's pretty accurate. Um, you'll notice different trends in your temp monitoring program. Uh, and it varies from program to program. 
So, 32. That's not bad at all. Um, yeah, so I know this is stable because I've overclocked to 4.2 on the default voltage. So I'm going to go ahead and restart. Oh, just keep an eye on your uh, core voltage because depending on the motherboard, it might change due to V-droop. Um, I know some motherboards have a feature to make it so there's l much less V-droop, but my Gigabyte motherboard doesn't. So let's restart and overclock another 300 megahertz and see if that's stable. Hooray, I've booted and it's... Well, well it booted. <laughs> At 3.8 gigahertz on the default voltage. Well, right now it's downclocked. Oh, hold on. It's not crashing. It's just my screen is retarded. Um, so it's downclocked right now. So what, what do we get for attempts at startup? Yeah, that's bullshit. So let's uh, start the stress test. Um, I really hope they fix that in an update of poor temp or revision of the new processor. So it's under load now. Let's watch the temperatures rise. Because that's really what you have to keep an eye on. Like, as you can see over here, this is staying pretty close to the default voltage. It'll go up and down a little bit. But it's not too bad. Running at 3.8 gigahertz. Oh, one thing to note is if you're calling bullshit on my overclock, sort of. My gigabyte motherboard has an issue. It likes to downclock, but this is this is pretty accurate, like for temps anyways. It's gonna be different for everyone, so don't just plug in my settings and hope it works. Um anyways, my gigabyte motherboard or sorry, yeah, my gigabyte motherboard likes to downclock. Some cores went under heavy load. But depending on what you're doing, it won't downclock. Um I don't know how to explain that, but it's it's different. It doesn't impact performance too much because it changes on the fly. Um, so yeah, it looks like we're getting 35 Celsius. You'll notice that when you overclock, um, just changing the multiplier, raising the uh, core speed, really doesn't change the temperatures too much. It's the voltage that really ups those temps. It, this is more linear, and this is much more exponential. Okay, let's restart, and let's just go for 4.1 gigahertz on the default voltage. Okay, so I've booted and I'm running at 4.1 gigahertz as you can see. Yeah, it, they're different right now, but they change. Hold on, my screen has to do that. There we go. Sweet. Um, so yeah, that, that temp is a lie also. Um, let's start stressing it. I'm just glad it booted. Okay. So it's stressing using 5 gigs of RAM. Does, it really doesn't matter how much you put in there. Just don't go to like 100 megs be stupid. Alright, so it's stressing it on as many cores as it can, it can because it's stupid. Um, 33 Celsius right now. Uh, it probably won't get too high because we haven't changed the voltage. But as soon as you change that voltage, that bitch is going to jump. Oh wow, it, it, it gets hot. Yeah, with one increment on that, on the uh, core voltage, it, it goes up really quickly. This is really cool, by the way. The, uh, Processor's running at 34 Celsius. Um, don't even attempt to overclock on the stock heat sink. You're going to blow your chip. And that would suck. I have the Corsair H80 water cooler. I don't think you'll be able to see that, but it's in push-pull configuration. On my desktop. So I have an all-in-one liquid cooler, which I think you should either make your own custom loop or get an H80 or the Antec... 920, that's the equivalent of the H80, or the H100, whatever you can fit in your case, or the Noctua, Noctua NHD14, something like that, I don't really follow air coolers all that much, but get a really high-end cooler, or just don't overclock this chip, it runs hot off the stock cooler anyways, so just be careful. So it looks like we're getting a high of 37 Celsius, um, once you get to this like high clock range of 4.14 4 gigahertz, I would advise letting it um, compute or stress test whatever you want to do for, I don't know, an hour to see if it's relatively stable. And if that's good enough for you, congratulations. But what I really recommend is if you want it rock solid, let it go, like fall asleep, leave your desktop on the whole night. Just let it crunch away. If you wake up, it blue screened or it restarted, there you go, it's not stable. Uh, it's just, 
how stable you really want it to be. So I'm going to restart and go for 4.2, which I don't think my processor is capable of on the stock voltage. So we're going to restart and find out. I'm going to keep the camera rolling uh, after I change the settings in the BIOS to see how it crashes to show you an example. Right. Time to hit save and exit and watch this mofo crash. It may not crash on the startup, but I believe it will. Okay. Hurry up. Hurry up, you crappy BIOS. Hurry up. Wish you could overclock the BIOS. That'd be kind of cool. Make things a bit quicker. Like, seriously, the so slowest thing... Ugh, excuse me. The slowest thing on my computer is the BIOS. It just slows down the boot time to crap. Okay, let's see if it freezes. Ooh, so far so good. And... We've booted. And no, I don't like the flower. I'm just far too lazy to change it. Okay, so booted. That's surprising. Let's open up CPU-Z. Y-Cruncher. Oh, that red is just because there's a... Uh, a uh, format that's not supported. Oh, there it goes. It crashed. Hooray for blue screens! So, right off the bat, we know it's not stable at all. So, you know what the next step is? To raise the voltage. Alright, it's going to restart on its own because it's a nice person because I'm fat and I don't feel like pressing the restart button. <sighs> Come on, go into the BIOS. Go into the BIOS. There we go. Hooray! Okay, so as you can see, we're running at 4.2 gigahertz. We're going to scroll way down. This will be different for everyone's BIOS. And we are going to raise this to the next increment. So now it should be running at 1.175 volts. That's a very small change, but you will notice it with the heat output. We're going to save. Exit setup. So, what you just saw me do there is what you're going to want to do until it's stable or until it puts off too much heat to sustain a stable overclock or until it blows up but I really want you to record that because that would be really funny to see alright so we're going to see if this has fixed the problem It could be torture. I could have it boot off the hard drive and make you have to wait five hours for it to boot. These hard drives are so shit. I have my SSD in here. It's not that high. God damn it. Apparently I don't know my password. Alright. Hold on. So it turns out caps lock was on. I didn't notice. Shut up, asshole. Okay. Let's open up all our programs. Core temp over here. I'm going to quit out of Steam because Steam is a bitch. I like to lock accounts and make everyone lose their games. Anyways, so these temps aren't too awful right now. Well, let's go put this bitch under load. Oh, it's at 4.2 gigahertz if you didn't look over there. Alright, so now I'm going to start stress testing. Uh-oh. Oh, no. It was just the screen restarting. It does that once after I boot up. I don't know why. So, right off the bat, you can see the temps are rising rather quickly. Remember, we had a high of 37 to 38. I can't remember which. And it's already at 36. My fans are on the highest settings, by the way. That's why this is running so cool. This shouldn't be too loud for you guys, anyways. Yep. So, I'm going to come back after maybe 10 minutes of this stress testing. And we'll see what the highest temp was. Okay, it's been running for about 10 minutes because that's the length of my attention span. And right now we're running at 41 Celsius, 40 Celsius under load, with a max of 42. That's already 4 degrees higher than our previous one. But this overclock seems to be relatively stable. Uh, yeah, so... Might as well restart and bump up that multiplier one more and see if we can get another 100 megahertz out of this voltage. So let's go ahead and restart. Okay, so I set it to 4.3 gigahertz in the BIOS. And we're going to watch it crash, because I pretty much guarantee that. Go ahead, attempt to load that operating system. You can't do it, you won't, no balls. Oh, it might do it. Okay, so i got to put in my password. Let's not turn caps lock on this time. 
I don't even know why I have a password on here. No one dares touch my computer. Uh, CPUZ. And. Oh, yeah, Y Cruncher. And our tab monitoring program. Pop up. There we go. So, we're at 4.3 GHz. I haven't done any stress testing because you just saw it boot. Um, 4.3 GHz, high 29, that's believable. Uh, let's start stressing it because we can. 2, 6. And now it's stressing it. Oh, we have a failed overclock. Uh, one fantastic thing about Y Cruncher is it, it doesn't just crash. Well, it does crash when you don't have a good overclock. It displays this red text for you. It looks kind of orange, but it's it's dark red. Multiplication failure or addition failure, and this is most likely a hardware error. This doesn't just mean your overclock is not stable. It means it will corrupt data going through the processor. So, this overclock is not stable. We're going to restart. And we're going to up the voltage one more increment. Okay, so we've restarted and I've got all my programs open. That should just be the default thing that you do. Um, 23, that might be a little bit accurate. Probably not. Uh, start stressing it and we'll see if we get those red numbers, or sorry, red letters again. Some errors. Um, oh yeah, I bumped up the voltage to 1.2 and you can see the V-droop is making it raise to 1.216. Changes. It varies. Um, Temp is at 37 already, 38, and it'll probably get to 35 if I let it run. Yep, nope, Multipli multiplication failure. All right, we're gonna restart, and we'll do it one more time. One more time. If not, we'll bl we'll back down the clock to 4.2 gigahertz at the default volt. Or sorry, not the default voltage, one below that, and we'll call that our highest overclock for now, because I don't feel like stressing my CPU that much, and you just you understand, you get the idea. Alright, so we just finished restarting. Let's open up all the programs. Oh, it's so nice having an SSD and not having to wait for its long shit. We want that there. Open up the temp. Y Cruncher. To find Y Cruncher, just Google it. It's not that hard to find the download. Um, okay, so your temps, they're relatively normal over there. High 26. Right now it's running at 22 Celsius. Now it's dropping. Now it's not accurate. Um, so I raised the voltage, and you'll see that now that we're stress testing. Wait for it to focus. There we go. Yeah, I don't know why my screen does that. Um, so apparently it doesn't show that the voltage is raised too much. It's supposed to be 1.225, something like that. Anywho, apparently it doesn't want to do that. But either way, it should make it stable. Hopefully. So, thank you very much for watching my tutorial on how to overclock the AMD FX8120 processor using the multiplier. Uh, subscribe if you want to see my tutorial of overclocking via the front side bus. I'll get it out when I can. No guarantees on when. Uh, but I guarantee that you will get much higher performance out of overclocking using the front side bus or whatever the hell they call it now. Uh, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. If you have any questions, message me or just leave a comment, video response, whatever you want. I don't care. Uh, thank you very much. It's just a little extra I thought I'd throw in. Um, apparently, Core Temp thinks I'm running at 12 gigahertz and 16 gigahertz on some of the cores. While that would be friggin' awesome, that's not true. Be nice though. Just thought I'd share that with you guys.